All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Will this be uh, who we are? And this is uh, my uh, conflicts of interest. Uh, I have to tell you that uh, when we first uh, started arriving here, this had no fast track applicability, but I felt a little bit like this doctor as I'm on a plane, an A320 going from uh, Dulles to San Diego. Uh, this was uh, just on Friday. And there's that announcement which comes over the loudspeaker, is there a doctor in the plane because we have an emergency? Uh, after looking around and seeing none of the other passengers willingly obliging the doctor, I found that there was a individual in the men's room who had uh, basically, while sitting on the john, collapsed. Uh, of course, we happened to find that this person in his early 30s uh, was uh, handling uh, a material that had since fallen on the floor, which was likely identified as heroin, and uh, with some Narcan that I administered, he uh, recovered promptly. This is an example of what I would term an opioid crisis. So high-dose opioids, indeed, were what were being used when I began cardiac surgery, and from about uh, 68 to about 90 or 92, that was the mode of anesthesia. Uh, we were using a systemic hypothermia, and the results of hypothermia are here. Very often, the need for post-op sedation. There was core temperature after drop we're very familiar with, with, and you did have vasoconstriction and frequently had acidosis. Well, in 92, in combination with Hartford Hospital, we uh, developed uh, the approach which I termed fast track, which was to expedite recovery. And fundamental to its implementation was the fact that the surgical staff, the surgeons, have to agree with it. Anesthesia had to come on board. We needed help from nursing and administration. And we needed an individual termed a discharge coordinator or a fast track coordinator. So this coordinator was a critical component of the fast track element, and it was, in that instance, a nurse, uh, could be uh, an advanced practitioner. It's a newly established position that we just established on our own. We uh, then began a plan of care. We activated interventions for the first 72 hours to accelerate recovery. Coordinated collaboration with a multidisciplinary team. We evaluated the outcome, and indeed, by our fast track coordinator, it was published by her, on our own in a nursing journal in '95. What do you need to do to accomplish fast track? You have to change your anesthesia approach. So we employed now inhalation anesthesia with forain, which wasn't pr previously in use. <clears throat> Our goal was to establish extubation within four to eight hours rather than a 12 to 24 hour time frame which was previously used. The details of the protocol were interesting. Uh, most of them are well known to us. Education, limiting food administration, but the uh, a rather unique one was the administration of uh, steroids. That was uh, solumedrol and decadron for a period of just immediately pre-op and for the first 24 hours post-op, and then just simply discontinuing it. The goal was to really abandon or reverse the inflammatory element associated with uh, cardiopulmonary bypass. And needless to say, this was accomplished in a remarkable degree for a large number of patients. Unfortunately, associated with it was an absence of healing, so that we ended up with a large number of patients who were draining through the sternum thereafter, and we abandoned this portion of our approach. But I have to tell you, steroids are a remarkable agent. Uh, you digitalize Reglan, docus docusate for GI function, Zantac, early ambulation, and we had a uh, instituted rehab, which we had previously not instituted, and we began discharge criteria early on with uh, patient and family education and return to the patient in four weeks to see us. All patients having cabbage then were consecutively reviewed for a six month period from the start of the program in January to uh, the last six months of 91 when it wasn't employed in either of the two hospitals. There were near 300 patients, approximately 50% were considered urgent or emergent. We had a fair incidence of uh, intraaortic balloon pump use and the two groups were very comparable. 
what differentiated the fast track group was that extubation within eight hours occurred in 19% versus 1.4%, and mind you, 19% is nothing like what we're getting now, which is much higher. The preoperative weight gain was significantly less, the length of stay was significantly less, and if you simply used a 106 code for 300 patients, or for, excuse me, 700 patients a year, having a, a cabbage procedure, the savings to the hospital was uh, $2.7 million, almost 2.8. So patient satisfaction, also a significant criteria of whether you're going to use the product, indeed was uh, very acceptable, was 77% comfortable with early discharge because education was formatted as part of the program. What did we find that were impediments? And they continue to be impediments. Severe LV dysfunction, COPD, needing prolonged intubation, renal failure, physiologically advanced age, atrial fibrillation. Now atrial fibrillation occurs between 30 and 40% of our patients. Reoperation for bleeding, prolonged bypass with periop hypothermia. So we developed uh, a critical path document variants of the path, analyze variants, and have a responsible person or personnel available, and we term that person a fast-track coordinator. To accomplish this success, we had the patient be normal thermic or near normal thermic on return to the ICU. Hypothermia was verboten. Prolonged intubation was abandoned if possible, encouraging ambulation. Education of family and patient were very important, and frequent communication post-discharge was considered to be essential. The fast-track approach, after we decided that this indeed was very successful, was then applied to all patients, valve, valve cabbage, and everything we were doing. In 93, we developed a national teleconference through using our uh, public broadcasting system as the uplink, and it worked out very successfully. Our goal was to educate other centers on how to duplicate our results, which we really considered state of the art. And indeed, the centers that participated were from Anchorage, Alaska, through the U.S. Can we get that louder by any chance? Uh, yes, thank you. I would like to know what the percentage is of Let's go back. Caller is online from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Go ahead, please. Uh, yes, thank you. I would like to know what the percentage is of patients entering into the fast track program who fail to complete the program and what the primary reasons for failure are. Well, basically, as uh, they requested of us. Caller uh, is online. Whoop. As they requested of us at that point in time. Is online from Let's see whether we can get to the next one. Go ahead, please. The next one, uh, maybe, there we go. Uh, well, basically, the same issues that we had in the 90s still concern us, namely, uh, probably closer to 35 to 40 percent of our patients develop uh, perioperative atrial fibrillation, and that connotes uh, a reason for uh, prolonging. Uh, the incidence uh, of having to stay within the hospital and not be early discharged. So any questions or comments or any thoughts in the past 25 plus years since this occurred?